Tensions are on the rise between the Obama administration and the White House press corps over what some call a lack of access to the president and the use of government photographers instead of independent journalists to record White House events. Now, the White House denies those claims, saying it has actually given the public more access to the president because of social media. Listen. Each presidential uh, team that has come in here has basically used, you know, for some denial of access, has used the previous president as an excuse, presidential team as an excuse for why they've denied that access. So you guys are setting precedent here that the next president uh, is going to use. And, and are you aware of that? And maybe uh, roll no, back. I'm not. I, roll actually, back I don't agree. Even I, I don't agree with that because I, I, I can't think of the only, the, the only precedent that I can think of in terms of the previous administration is where we've taken steps to try to be more transparent. Let's talk about it with Judith Miller, a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter, author and Fox News contributor. Kirsten Powers is a Daily Beast columnist and Fox News contributor as well. Kirsten, this is supposed to be the most transparent administration in American history. That's what we were promised. What's going on? Well, I think that they're very careful about managing President Obama's image, and it has not been transparent. And this has been a, a complaint that's been going on for quite some time, actually, that they basically use uh, White House photographers, for example, as the, as propaganda. They just take pictures and they release them. They don't let photographers in to uh, meetings that they would normally have access to. Um, in, in the past, you'd, you'd be able to come in and at least maybe ask a question or two. Uh, now they only will just release the, you know, the most flattering picture. Um, there's no access to questions. Uh, they have these interviews with something called White House TV that they just release out uh, like a wire service or something and are denying access to journalists. Well, Judy, you know, some people sitting at home might say, OK, so what if it's taken by the official White House photographer Pete Souza rather than by the Associated Press or the New York Times or the Washington Post? What's the big deal? Well, of course there's a big deal, John, because a White House photographer, the official photographer, is not about to present to the American people an unflattering image of the president. That's what this is all about. You know, these tensions started really to escalate back uh, in the summer when President uh, Obama went to South Africa. And White House uh, correspondents, that is the press corps, were permitted to take a single photo each. But Pete Souza, the official White House photographer, took a picture of him hugging his daughter Sasha in the cell and that went all over. That's the image that everyone saw. When you have state uh, photographers taking pictures and state news services with carefully pre-arranged questions, you don't have a free and independent media. So that's what's going on here and reporters should be angry. Um, there was another exchange with Chuck Todd of NBC News uh, at the White House. I think we can play that now. I want to give our viewers a sample of some of the tensions. At this podium, people have been critical of other countries and how they handle press freedom. Mm -hmm. And by this White House doing it by releasing their own version of things without a, a press filter, doesn't that yeah. call into question about some basic small-D democratic values? If there were uh, another country who were using uh, a government employee as a substitute, for an independent professional journalist. And that's just not something that we, that, that, that is the, that is the clear difference. You, that that is not. What we have done. That has happened we when have, you took the second oath. What, what we have done is we have u tried to provide, use new technology and the president's personal photographer as a way to provide additional insight into what's happening at the White House. So Josh Ernest is saying all of that with a straight face, Kirsten. I mean, uh, but that is exactly what they've done, isn't it? You know, this White House yes. TV thing that you, you yes. have discussed. That's their own well, sort of video camera crew recording events that the, the free press is shut out from. Yeah, absolutely. And if you take that, you know, I, I can see some people would say, oh, what's the big deal about a picture? Well, what people need to understand is take the, take the uh, there's a picture that the White House photographer took of his, his meeting with Hillary Clinton. Well, so they're not going to release a picture that would show any tension, right? We don't know that there was tension. But if there was tension, you'll never see that. What you'll see is the happy, smiling picture. And so that, that just goes for every single meeting, whether he's you know meeting with, with anybody uh, or any situation. And, and I think that what Josh Ernest just said isn't happening is exactly what's happening, and is that in the past, 
every other president, every other White House would let photographers in, would let um, even you know uh, TV cameras in. They call them a spray, and you come in and you walk in, and they often are able to ask questions. Right. And obviously, the White House photographer is not asking questions. And there are some some very serious consequences here, Judy. I'm I'm thinking back to the Ford administration. Jerry Ford was probably our most athletic pre president, save maybe Teddy Roosevelt. And yet, you know, he gets filmed stumbling down the steps of Air Force One again a few times, maybe maybe twice. It becomes this skit on Saturday Night Live, and all of a sudden he's a bumbling president who who barely lost his reelection. Uh, if if his White House could have controlled those images somehow, you might have had a very different chain of events. Absolutely, you might have had a very different president. And you know, John, we've been talking about John F. Kennedy. There was a president who provided unbelievable amounts of access to the media, much more than this administration has has pretended even to produce, and yet, you know, he managed to seduce the press by giving access. This administration, while talking about transparency, does the opposite. Uh, Judy, I, I just want to turn especially your attention to this, the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination, and, and your memories of the day he was shot. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I was in English class studying the Scarlet Letter, <laughs> and it was a, a terrible red day for me, too. Yeah. It's just something that you will always remember. I, uh, Where were you, John? <laughs> I, was coming, I was coming out, leaving kindergarten, and, uh, <laughs> and I heard from my teacher that the president had been shot, and I went home and told my mother, and I think it was the first news report that I ever wow. passed along. Wow. <laughs> Starting early. and yeah. uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, that, that's going to do it for our media analysis segment for today. Kirsten Powers, Judy Miller, thank you both. Thank you, John. Thank you.